Welcome to the Hebrew Prepositions uh, homework section, the workbook. Today we're going to go ahead and go over the lesson six that we went through previously on the Hebrew prepositions. Um, it looks like on the homework here it's asking for the inseparable prepositions uh, which we were to translate. Um, translate the following nouns with inseparable prepositions. And what we want to do is go through here and, and make sure that you're understanding um, what is an inseparable preposition and uh, see if we can translate these examples they've given to us here. We have be, sa, de, and because uh, this is showing a uh, be with a, uh, a bait with a shava, that is an indefinite. Uh, so basically this is in a field is what we would translate instead of in the because it doesn't have uh, a patak there nor the doubling of the sin right there. Number two does. It has ba sade. You see the um, the bait with the patak with the doubling of the sin right here. That is a um, Showing that this has a definite article that's been attached to Sadeh. The hay has just dropped out and the bait took its place. It says Ba Sadeh in the field. Be'eretz in a land. Ba'aretz in the land. Okay. Of course, you remember that the uh, Eretz is one that takes an irregular vowel here when it goes into the definite when it has a direct object, I mean a definite article attached to it here so it, it lengthens to a um, to comments and of course in this situation what was normally a patak the olive rejects the doggish forte thus it lengthens called compensatory lengthen it lengthens the patak to a comments in the land number five is la ear to a city, because you got the Lamed with the Shiva here. Vocal Shiva just tells us that it's just a basic preposition. To a city. La, ear, la, ear, to the city. Again, the I-N rejects the doubling of the Gesh, and the Patak lengthens to a Comets, compensatory lengthen here. La, ear, to the city. Number seven is Behechal in a temple. Got the bait, which is the preposition, and the Shiva, which is telling you that it is uh, indefinite. That's in a temple, not specifying which one. Behechal, you got the Patak here, and the Degesh is rejected by the Hay, and thus you have what they call virtual doubling. And so uh, that's what you're seeing here is in the temple. In the temple. Ba Hechal. All right, let's go ahead and uh, bring this up a little bit here. And then the next one we have is Le'isha to a woman, or to or for a woman. And number 10, we have Laisha. Again, uh, the hay has dropped out. This is a definite article, but the hay has dropped out. You see the comments here. Uh, that's telling you that that's a definite article in in here with a preposition. Uh, two or four. So two or four, the woman. The olive rejects the degesh forte and the pot. Normally pot talk that would be there lengthens to a comments. You see this all the time in the Hebrew uh, scriptures here. All right, let's go ahead and get over here to the prepositions. Let's translate these prepositional phrases here. Betok hanahar. Betok hanahar. In the midst of the river. This is betok means in the midst. So hopefully, hopefully you're studying your your vocabulary because they, they are going to give you vocabulary words that they have in each lesson here. Betok Hanahar, in the midst of the river. This is a uh, separated use of the preposition. Ad Haboker, Ad 
high boker accents on the first syllable here you see that little carrot and this has my cave in it here until the morning is how we would translate that betok ha'ir betok ha'ir in the midst of is this preposition betok ha'ir is the city in the midst of the city again you have the um the Patak uh, lengthened to a comments because of the rejection of the Gash Forte in that guttural ayin. Al Davar Hamelik. Al Davar Hamelik. This is Al Davar. When you see Al Davar here, that's usually on account on, or on account of, um, the king. On account of, or because of, on account of. Okay, we have Lifne. Number five, Lifne Hanavim. Lifne Hanavim. And we have Lifne, which is detached here. Uh, uh, detached, uh, separated preposition. Uh, means before the prophets. Literally before the face of the prophets. Faces of the prophets, but we'll get into that later. But normally just translate before the prophets. Number six, is mim ma'al, mim ma'al, accents on the first syllable, mim ma'al, uh, hamiz beach, uh, mim ma'al, hamim beach. So we basically have from above or from above or from upon the altar. Here, Here's the separated preposition here. And uh, I actually have two prepositions <laughs> here attached in this preposition. All right, number seven here. Uh, you can see this is the men attached to Ma'al. Got the men with the hierarch with the noon here, Dugesh Forte in that mem. Number seven, we have Ad Hayom. Ad Hayom. Got the Dugesh uh, Forte there, so it's Hayom, not Hayom. But Hayom, Ad Hayom, and got the Makaif here. So you have the uh, the the attached preposition um, with the Makaif until the day is how we would translate that. Al Pane Hashofet, Al Pane Hashofet. That is before. Al Pane is usually before the face or before the judge. You could have the same thing, you translate pretty much like the same thing as Lifne. But Al Pane, before, literally before, upon the faces of the judge, uh, is what this literally says, but before the judge. Mipane uh, Haisha. Mipane Haisha. Um, basically what we have here is from the faces or from the presence of the woman. From the presence of the woman. We have the preposition men with the assimilated noon here with the doggish forte. Put it on pane, which is face. Um, before the presence of the woman. Literally means from the faces of the woman. But uh, before the presence of the woman. That's how we would translate in English. Number 10 is Lifne Hamelachim. Lifne Hamelachim. Uh, that would be uh, in the presence of the king, so before the presence of the king. Al Ham Mizbeach. Al Ham Mizbeach. It means upon the altar. This is a preposition with a markev uh, attached to a noun. All right, let's continue on with the with the homework here and go over some examples here. Um, we have El Ha'arim. El Ha'arim is to the cities. That's uh, two, L is two or four. And He'arim 
you remember this is the one the, the definite article when it's attached to a ion a he or a het that has a comments in an unaccented syllable the, the uh, vowel up under the definite article changes from a uh, patak to a sigal just reading going back in less than the definite articles here okay Number 13 is metoch he anan. Metoch he anan. Again, it has the same principle here with the sigol as we did before up there. You got the ayin with the comets. And we would translate that as from the midst of the clouds. From the midst of the clouds. Or actually, from the, from the midst of the cloud. Because this is singular, it's not plural. From the midst of the cloud. Men hanavi. Men Hanavi, now this is attached with the Makav. The preposition Men is attached with the Makav here, and so it's from the Prophet. Me Hanavi. Me Hanavi. This is saying the same thing from the Prophet, but it's in two different forms. One is attached, 14 is attached with the Makav. So you have the noon there in the Herrick. But 15 is attached directly to the noun with the definite article, I mean with the uh, definite um, article here. And so what happens again is that the hey of the definite article rejects the, the dagesh of the, of the assimilate noon of men and it lengthens the hiric, which was up here, it lengthens it to a sere. Mehana me hanavi me hanavi from the prophet all right if you want to say it with indefinite article it's minavi minavi you have the mem with the hiric with the assimilated noon in that noon uh, giving it a doggish forte so it's min na v from a prophet so you can compare and contrast the difference between the, the noun with the definite article and the noun without the definite article uh, with the um, preposition men attached to it. Betok hasadeh. Betok hasadeh. In the midst of the field. You have your definite article here, ha, with the, um, the doggish forte in the first consonantal letter of the noun Sadeh number 18 we have Bain Hashemaim Uvain Haaretz Bain Hashemaim Uvain Haaretz and so we would say here's the preposition Bain between is separated between the heavens and here's your U remember the bump rule when the conjunction is attached to a bet, a bet, a bet, a mem, or a pay, it uh, takes the shurik instead of the simple shavah under it. it. Says uvein haarts. Okay, so between the heavens and between the earth, we would say in English between the heavens and the earth. We wouldn't repeat between twice, but in Hebrew they do repeat pain, the preposition twice. Bain Heharim Uvain Hayam Bain Heharim Uvain Hayam So you got the Bain between is detached uh, from the uh, noun Heharim Definite article remember the um, the rule for a hay with a comment so for an unaccented syllable takes us a goal in the definite article and then the bump rule here for U, Vain, Hayam. Definite article attached to Yam for C. So between between the mountains and between the sea. In English we would say between the mountains and the sea. On number 20 we have Me Ha'anashim. We have the men. Me Ha'anashim. We have the men attached with a definite article on a noun and the lengthening of the hieric the one dot 
to the serai, two dots here. Because the hay, the hay, letter hay rejects the doubling of the of the, uh, the degesh for the assimilated noon of men. So that's what you have here from the men. Oh, let's go under into Hebrew composition here, and it says write in Hebrew the following prepositional phrases using the inseparable prepositions be, le, and ke. And uh, <clears throat> can just look at just read the English and what it says. It says like a king. A is your cue here to tell you that's indefinite. So we would say take melek and we would put the preposition ke and attach it to it and be ke melek. Ke Melek. Number two is like the king. So the is what we're looking for here. Like the king. We would take Ke and we would put the definite article because it's going to high Melek. The king is going to be high Melek. The hay is going to drop out. The cough is going to come down, take its place, and it's going to be called Ka Melek. Ka Melek. To a man. It would be uh, Lamed plus Ish, and we're going to say Le Ish to a man, Le Ish. If we wanted to say to the man, it would be Ha Ish plus adding the Le to it, so the hay drops out, and we ret it retains the, the vowel for the other comments, so it would be La Ish, La Ish to the man. In a gate, it would be uh, be plus sha'ar, sha'ar. So we would put the bet with a simple shava and sha'ar here, the shin, patak, ayin, patak, resh. Be sha'ar, in a gate. If we want to say in the gate, we put the definite article on the gate. And then we bring the preposition and attach it to it. The hay drops out. The patak and the doubling of the shin remain. And we have basha'ar. Basha'ar. Number seven, like a judge. We would take ke, like, and show fate and combine together to make ke, show fate. Ke, show fate. Like a judge. If we want to make it like the judge, we take uh, Hashofet, add Ke to it, the hay drops out, uh, and the cough drops in, and it's Ka Shofet. Ka Shofet. Now in a land, we would say Be'eretz, Be'eretz. But when we say in the land, remember Eretz is one that changes when it goes into it with a definite article. We would say Ha'aretz plus Be. The hay drops out and we would have, instead of Ha'aretz, we'd have Ba'aretz. Ba'aretz. Okay, uh, again, that's you know, pretty simple right here. Just going to take getting used to recognizing uh, everything. Uh, I would encourage you to go back and keep reviewing these chapters in your book. Uh, review is the key to getting it down into you and, rec and for you to recognize all the different letters and pronunciations and the rules and stuff. And so, it's give yourself time. It's going to take time for uh, all this to um, to come in and stuff. And so, um, be sure to just keep reviewing. And so. What we're going to do is get into some Bible translation, and that's the main objective of taking this course, is learning how to, to read the Hebrew, reading how to be able to translate. All right, so we're going to go to number one, Betok Hagan, Betok Hagan. Uh, we would translate that in the midst of the garden, and we find this in Genesis 3.3. Number two, Beni Uvein Haaretz. Beni Uvein Haaretz. Um, that would be between me and between the earth. 
Uh, we find that in Genesis 9.13. That's it's in the Noah story. Number three is Betok Hasadeh. Betok Hasadeh. Uh, that's in the midst of the field. In the midst of is preposition Ha Sade is the field. Number four is Babait Uva Sade. Babait. It's Babait. Babait Uva Sade. You have in the house Babait and in the field. You can look at this, you see how that what would normally have been a Dagesh Lane that was here drops out when it's attached to a, a vowel comes before Bagakafet letter with the Lane. So the Lane, Dagesh Lane drops out, so it becomes a soft vet. It's Babait Uva Sade. It's mainly for phonetic pronunciation. Is the reason why these, this rule is in, in place. Number five is Metok He Anan. Metok He Anan. It's from the midst of the cloud. Remember the rule for the definite article with an I in plus the comments here. Takes us a go. Okay, from the midst of the cloud. Milpane. Adonai. Mil panay Adonai. Uh, I'm sorry about that. That would be uh, Mil Milifne. Uh, Milifne. Milifne Adonai. Sorry about that. Milifne Adonai. That's from the presence of the Lord. Because you got the doubling of the uh, Lamed here. Mil. And then another lama starts another syllable with le, with a non-vocal shavar under this pay, and then ne means your last one. Melifne, uh, melifne. Okay. On number seven we have um, al kal basar, al kal basar. Uh, upon all flesh. Upon is all all. Upon is all, and then call is all, basar, upon all flesh. Now we have number here, number eight here, we have men ha'adama, men ha'adama, from the ground. You have the definite order here on adama, so um, it's on the ground right here. And of course, you got the compensatory lengthening of this patak to a comments here. Min ha dama is from the ground. Alright. Alright, number nine, we're going to have min ha olam ad ha olam. Min ha olam ad ha olam. That's from everlasting. Min is from everlasting ha olam to until or to ad ha olam. Ha'olam, to everlasting. From everlasting to everlasting. Uh, basically, from eternity uh, until eternity, so forever. Um, so we have the men with the makaif, and we have the odd with the makaif attached to it. And so. Okay, number 10 is Achar Hadevarim Ha'ele. Achar hadevarim ha'ele. After these things, see hadevarim not only means words, but it also can mean things or matters. So achar hadevarim ha'ele. So we have that um, in here, and let's see. Uh, I don't think that's it right there. I believe, yeah, yep, that's it right there. So, all right, well. Let's go ahead and um, uh, that's been the homework for the chapter with prepositions here. And um, just keep reviewing, as I said before, uh, go ahead and sign up for the breakout session uh, on tobysplace.org. Uh, so that you can join us uh, if you have any questions uh, about anything in the um, 
in the previous lessons or this lesson. Be glad to answer those online and everything. And until next session, uh, shalom.